So in Nigeria, elections are either bought or stolen. Plata o plomo. There's no such thing as a free and fair election. It's been that way my whole life. It's been that way since independence. And so whenever we talk about the civic space and the dysfunction in the civic space in Nigeria, we talk about elections. And you have so many different people who keep thinking about new ways, better ways to run elections, or ways to stop elections from being stolen or bought. And a lot of the time, the, the, the conversations turn to tech. A lot of people believe that the answer is going to be a tech product in some way, some software, some app that can stop elections being stolen. But you can't have an online solution to an offline problem. And that's where it often get, goes wrong. So let me give you an example. Back in 2011, a political party was trying to protect its votes. So they came to me and asked me to design a vote counting application for them. And here's how it works, pretty straightforward. So there are 3,000 polling stations in that state. And the party has an agent in each polling station on election day. Now, when the voting is done and the votes are counted, that polling agent takes their phone and types in the result from the station and uploads it to our server. And then the server adds up all these results from all 3,000 stations and figures out the vote, who's won and who's lost. The idea was, once you have that result, if the election officials announce a false result, trying to steal the election, you now have the evidence to counter them. So here's what happened on election day. It worked like a charm. Within 30 minutes of the election being over, the votes being counted, the party had all the results from all across the state. Now, we all know, however, that there's a difference between knowing the results and having an official announcement of the results. If you've been following the American election, you know exactly what I mean. So to get an official result in Nigeria, here's what needs to happen. Those votes have to be written down at the polling station by the election official on paper. And then those paper results are, tr are sent physically to another place called a collation center. At the collation center, they add up all the results and write them down again on paper. And then they announce that as the official result. But it's simple math going on at the collation center. It's just a formality, right? Wrong. Because here's what happened at the collation centers. It's the same thing that happens there every election day. Armed men showed up. They took over the collation centers. They drove away all the party agents. And then they sat down with the election officials and wrote new results, fake results. And that's what got announced. Election over. There is no app for that. And that's why so many of the solutions people bring for the election problem fail. They depend on online solutions for offline problems. Eight years later, 2019, groups of women in that state said they're not making the same mistake. They said it's clear that apps and software platforms can't solve that collation center problem. So they decided to try an offline solution. So what did they do? On election day, 2019, after counting their votes at the polling station, these women marched in their hundreds, in their thousands, to the collision centers. They occupied the collision centers. And when the armed men showed up at the collision centers, these women refused to move. They looked the armed men in the eye and said, shoot us. If you want to steal this election, shoot your mothers, shoot your daughters, shoot your sisters. And guess what happened? The armed men blinked. They couldn't shoot them. They backed off. And so the official results ended up being the real results. Election over. They didn't need an app for that because they were the app. And that's the difference between solutions that work and solutions that don't. The women in 2019 succeeded where the app in 2011 failed because they approached the problem, that 
problem with democracy the way a product manager approaches a problem with an app he designed. They applied problem-based thinking instead of solution-based thinking. What's the difference? Is the difference between saying, my client needs a word processor app, and saying, my client needs a way to write stuff down. Because when you say the second way, you know that a way to write stuff down could be an app, or it could be a pen and paper, or a Sharpie and a whiteboard, or it could be a tattoo gun and their skin. How do you choose? You choose a solution based on exactly what the client's pain points are. So when you choose an app for securing your client's election, and you don't pay attention to the fact that the pain point is actually armed men in a collision center, you are being solution-based instead of problem-based. All over the world right now, young people are saying, enough. They are addressing the issues in their civic space, all the dysfunction, and they're saying, we want better democracies for ourselves. Will they succeed? It depends. It depends on whether they're going to ap apply product thinking to the situation, or if they're simply going to say, let's build an app. And SARS used pr solution, and SARS used product-based thinking, and that's why it succeeded. All my life, protests in Nigeria have failed. They don't last and they don't scale. Why? Because protesters tend to go home very early. No protest lasts more than a few days. Why? Because protesters go home because they're hungry or protesters go home because of police brutality, or protesters go home because they get arrested and nobody wants to go to jail, and they can't trust the protest leaders to come through for them. NSAS solved all of those problems. How did they do it? They provided food for protesters out in the streets. That was a new feature. They provided medical aid for protesters who got beaten up by the police, also a new feature. They provided legal aid for protesters who were arrested and detained illegally. Also a new feature. So now, as a protester, you know that your leaders have your back. That keeps you out on the streets. And they did all this through crowdfunding. Also a new feature. And every step of the way, they accounted for every dollar and every naira donated. Accountability and trust very new feature. Nigerians were not used to that in the public space. And that trust deficit is the biggest reason why things don't work, is the biggest reason why movements fail. So you want to change Nigeria or your own country. You have all these ideas for reform. You want to improve the way governance works. Well, congratulations, you just became the founder of a startup that wants to disrupt governance by competing with government. But it's not an easy job. If you're going to succeed, you need to provide one thing that government has failed to do, trust. We talked about elections being stolen or bought. I've told you how they're stolen. Now let me tell you why they're bought. Why are people willing to sell their votes? They sell their votes because they can't trust politicians to deliver. Every election, every campaign season, Politicians talk to Nigerians and promise them the world. But Nigerians have learned that after the election, they will never see these people again and none of the promises will be kept. And so Nigerians very rationally have decided, instead of voting based on these promises, let me vote based on what this politician will give me now. And so they sell their votes to the highest bidder. If you want to change that, you address the pain point. You don't condemn them for selling their vote, but you figure out why they're doing it and give them an alternative. In this case, it would mean giving them a track record of why they should vote for whoever you think they should vote for. People who want to overcome the trust deficit and earn the votes of Nigerians or anybody else have to show them 
a track record. You have to adopt the NSARS model, for example, of providing services before you come to them so that you're no longer saying to them, vote for me and I will do. You're saying, vote for me because I have done. Now, some will say, why should a private citizen provide services? That's government's job. And I agree. But here's the thing. Look at the citizen like a user of an app. You don't get a user in, to use your app by guilting them. You get them to use your app by solving a problem they have. It's a buyer's market. You don't make the market adjust to you. You adjust to the market. And I think that's the heart of product-based thinking. And if more reformers approach the civic space problem with, pro with product thinking, with problem-based thinking rather than solution-based thinking, I think we will end up building far fewer apps and far more communities. Thank you.